Brenda Ornays. She's running for district attorney. Her name's Donna Dumont. And why are we giving her $200? Because Renee is her legal counsel, and with two teenagers running around the streets of Birmingham, you never know when you might need a friend on the inside. But $200? Well, $175? $125. $150. $150. $150. $150. Deal. That's my toothbrush. I know, but I used mine to detail the minivan yesterday. Davis, time to get up. Already up, Mom. Thank you, Kelly. Time to get up. Kelly, time to get up. Kel. Ah! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mrs. Sims, I apologize. I didn't mean to... I'd just it's... like to remind you that anything you say can and will be used against you just as soon as your father gets here. Mom, you don't even know what happened. All we did was, was study... And I know exactly asleep. what happened, okay? Your father and I went to bed at 9.36 p.m. last night. At 9.50, you were in your room alone. I know this because I came down here to get myself some cereal. Somewhere between 10.05 p.m. last night and 7 a.m. this morning, a Johnny snuck in the house. True or false? False. True. He, he didn't sneak in. I, I opened the window and I let him in. That's your dad. Hi. Sorry we had to meet this way for the first time, but... Come on. Mr. Williams, could we talk a minute? All I have to say, Mrs. Sims, is that I'm glad that Johnny's not dead. Because that's exactly what my wife and I were up all night worrying about. Since we didn't even know the two of them were dating again, it never occurred to us that Johnny might be found sleeping in your daughter's bed. Move! You're not alone there. Is that all you have to say? I mean, why did I not have to keep you from wringing their necks? Because I think they're probably telling the truth. Come on, Kelly, we're taking a walk. It's like a sauna in here, Lakeisha. And the landlord said the best he could do is send someone out next week to fix the air conditioning. Renee Jackson? Yeah, I got it. Here you go. <laughs> Bring him in, boys. Okay. From a boyfriend, Renee? Not unless they send it to the wrong person at the wrong address. Congratulations, Renee. For what? Today is our one-year anniversary as office partners. That's it. Don't tell me. The flowers... Are from me. That is so sweet, Joe. Yeah, I thought so. And to thank you for such a memorable year together, I thought maybe a dinner at Le Chic would be in order. I hear the truffle stuffed with foie gras are to die for. As monumental as our one-year anniversary is, Joe, I can't. I'm too busy. But, Renee, you can never be too busy for fine wine and good conversation. What are you doing? Well, maybe I can help. I mean, lately I've been sensing a restlessness, am I right? All right, well, let's find out why. Don't worry, I'll give it right back. This is ridiculous. Uh, I, 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 on the contrary, my mama spent the last 10 years in Miami as a palm leader. It's a family gift. I must relax the hand or the hand won't speak to me. Oh, my. What? Oh, this is very interesting. What? You see this line right here? <laughs> Yes. What does it mean? It means you're ticklish, Renee. Oh, Joe. Okay, right, now that you're smiling again, how about that celebration dinner? I can. I've got to write a speech for Donna's fundraiser, and I've got to go through all those boxes for Mr. Jones. He was a client of my father's who made the office the executor of his will. What are you doing now? It's called a favor. I'm taking over Mr. Jones. No, you're not. Trust me, Renee, I was an estate lawyer with Barnes & Monroe in Atlanta. You were at Barnes & Monroe? For five years. Joe, 
Thanks for the flowers. Sure. Oh, and Renee, since dinner's out of the question, maybe I can find some other ways to thank you. I'm about to ask you a question, and I'm afraid I already know the answer. You're having sex with a Johnny, and you're going to try and tell me that you're not, right? Wrong. Wrong about which part? Wrong because we're not having sex. Are you sure? Weren't you sure when you and Dad did it? Yes. And so am I. And, and I'm not. But if we were, would you want me to use protection? Yes, I, I would. I, I would, but Kelly, a condom, I, any kind of contraception cannot protect your heart and your mind. And that's why I don't think I know, that you're ready I, I know, but we've talked about this a zillion times. And do you, do you think I'm right? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you I haven't thought about it. And that is why God gave us prayer and discipline and insane mothers to beat us into submission if all else fails. Now, let's try again. I'm worried that things with you and Johnny are moving a little too fast. Don't be. We're fine. I think I'm going to need a little more convincing than that. Why don't you just try and talk to me like I was your girlfriend? Well, I'd start by telling you to mind your own business and get a life. Now try and find a middle ground. The whole time that I was seeing Jason, a Johnny was the only person I could talk to. That's when I realized we feel the same way about so many things. Like what? Like, like going to college. Like not having sex until you're married. I'm feeling a little better. Go on. We both believe in God. We listen to the same music. We are the only two people in our whole class who don't think Jim Carrey is funny. He even wrote me a poem. Dad wrote me a poem once. I am sorry about last night. I'm sure you are. You owe the Williams an apology, too, you I know. know. So, what about my car keys? I will let you have your car keys back in one week, which is when I will allow you to see a Johnny again. A whole week? If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Renee! Hey, Emmy, what are you doing here? I got out early of some apostle's birthday or something, and I wanted to go to your house and meet Cookie Grandma. Who are you looking at? It's a boy, isn't it? I can tell by that crazy look in your eye. Tell me before I do something embarrassing, like pick my nose. Emmy, don't you dare. Okay, okay, okay. You see that boy in the red shirt with the blonde hair? I think so. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah, but Renee, he's white. Oh, my Lord. I haven't seen you smile like that since you and Carver snuck out to chase fireflies. I know. Come on. Cookie Grandma? I'm in here, child. <laughs> Hello, baby. It smells like cinnamon raisin. Oh, my. You must be that Mary Elizabeth child that my son warned me would be so much fun. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Maybe you should take some of those cookies to your new boyfriend. Me? Boyfriend? At your age? Lord, I see my prayers ain't being answered. He's grown to be more and more like your mama every day. He's got blonde hair and his... Blonde hair? She's just kidding, Grandma. Mm-hmm. Why don't you take these here cookies and go wait on Renee in her room? Go on now, child. Sorry. This a white boy? Do your daddy know about this? No, ma'am, because it's not true. She's just causing trouble. Like Daddy warned you she might. You best be telling me the truth now, girl. Because little white boys, they grow up to be big white men, and ain't none of them gonna treat my grandbaby the way she deserved to be treated. You understand me? Mm-hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, Renee, I'm petrified because I think Kelly thinks she's in love. You're petrified and I'm pathetic. What a pair. Hey, I thought we 
were supposed to be talking about me and my problems tonight. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Vent. Today, I realize that the longest relationship I've had with a man since moving back to Birmingham has been with Joe. Well, maybe it's like the old song says. You've been looking for love in all the wrong places. I'm changing the subject. Chicken. So, how's Collier taking all this with a Johnny? Is the kid still walking? Running is more like it, but not from Collier. From me. Isn't Collier upset? Well, somehow Collier jumped into the parental land of cliché, starting with, well, boys will be boys, which led to... Well, Kelly's just a chip off her old mother's block, and that's where the conversation ended. Oh, my. Is he angry at Kelly? No. Reverse psychology. Huh? Reverse psychology. He knows if he doesn't do anything that you will. Oh, he does, does he? Don't think I don't know what you're up to. And this reverse psychology thing is only going to work for so long before the real call your sims comes crashing headfirst into something and hurts someone. Kelly said she thinks this time you lost your mind. Good. Let her think I've gone stark raving crazy over this. Somebody around here has to. Let teenagers be teenagers, Suge. Especially if they're in love. Can I at least call him once a day? No. Why? He didn't come in the house through the telephone. Do you want me to make it two weeks? Yeah. Well... Sure. Oh. All right. Well, look forward to it. Bye-bye. Who is that? Johnny's father. Invited us to dinner tomorrow night. Kids and parents together? Not exactly. The kids aren't invited. And you said yes? Well, what was I supposed to say? How about no? Donna Dumont represents the kind of leadership Birmingham needs in the district attorney's office. She has always represented the highest. Are you gonna let me in or am I gonna have to huff and puff and blow your mansion down? And me? Uh, Johnny's parents have invited us over for dinner without the kids. What do you think this means? I don't know. Have you ever met them? Only Mr. Williams, when he barged into the house and tried to snatch a Johnny out of there like he was some kind of downed pilot behind enemy lines. Maybe he just wants to meet under better circumstances. You think? I need coffee. A mild tranquilizer might do you more good. Oh, nice flowers. Whoa, hey, there are hundreds of them. Where did these come from? I brought them from the office. And before they were at the office, they were from? Joe, but it doesn't mean anything. Oh, now, come on, Renee. When was the last time a guy sent you something more than a bunch of sorry red carnations? Don't you have to leave now? Look at it this way, Renee. Joe is handsome, and he's, he's fun, and... And he's handsome, and he makes you smile. So do Chris Rock and Ellen DeGeneres, but you don't see me planning on going out with either of them. You know, maybe you ought to talk to Kelly. About? About the advantages of not being in a relationship. I mean, this celibacy thing's really working for you, isn't it? I saw that finger. And I didn't appreciate it. Lakeisha? Renee, look at how they blossomed overnight. They're beautiful. Oh, how can I help you? Yeah, Joe Lozano sent me. He said that uh, I was one of his uh, thank yous. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah. He said you got a problem. Thought maybe I could take care of it. Wait, it is hot in here. Just hold it right there. I, I don't know what Joe Lozano has told you, but I'm not interested in some sweaty little dance where you take off your shirt and your jeans. So if you don't mind... Look, lady, I'm just here to fix your air conditioning. Hey, all right. Hey. Some surprise, eh, Renee? Hey. Units in here. Cool. Hey, it's good to see you again, man. Good to see you. How's your wife? Wife? He was married? You were married? About your Mr. Jones. He was married five times. However, his estate wasn't left to any of his wives. Look at this. Norma Jean, as in Marilyn? Of course not, Renee, but he left everything he had to her. All $1,257 of it. Yeah, I know, it's not much, but well, they were in love. I thought it was written over 40 years ago. Yeah, and I went down to the city clerk's office to check the records. They were never married. And I can't find her last name anywhere. 
This could be one of the great love stories of all time. I know that, Emmy. But how am I going to practice getting him to sit next to me so he can talk to me if you're not going to help me? Okay. Start by doing what feels natural. I'll tell you if it looks all right. What are you doing? Giving you the eye. Well, don't. It looks creepy. Forget it. I give up. Don't give up. Just don't wait for some boy to come to you. You gotta go and sit down and say hi. And if he says hi back, then start talking. And if that doesn't work, then just punch him in the arm. Ow! Another drink? If the whiskey's still wet. Two fingers again? Well, I'll see and I'll raise you one. <laughs> Guys, why don't you come on inside? Dinner's ready. Sure. Have drinks will travel, right, Carly? Hey. Do you have a daughter, too? Like, oh, no, that's you. my niece, Dana. Oh, oh my God. Uh, Johnny, he's an only child. That's why it's so important to us that he become a Morehouse man, just like his father. Yes, it has already been accepted. Oh, great. I didn't yeah. know. Thanks. And Kelly? Oh, she's looking at a few colleges. Including Spelman, I understand. Spelman? Yeah, that's the predominantly black female college right across the street from Morehouse. Oh, I know Spelman. I always thought you wanted to go to Bama. Didn't know about Spelman. And why should you? You didn't even know that Johnny was sleeping with your daughter. Mashed potatoes? I don't think that they were sleeping together. I think that they were studying together. Gail. <sighs> You don't actually believe that, do you? Well, that's what Kelly told me, so that's what I believe. Look, what my wife is trying to say... Please, Reg, don't put words in my mouth, okay? Well, then, what I'm trying to say is let's cut the crap. Why is your daughter stalking our son all the way to Morehouse? Stalking? Reg, honey, just... If anyone is stalking anyone, it's your son. Hell, he broke into my house through a window like a cat burglar. Can we just get this over with? What over with? I just want to tell you something right now. Johnny is going to be a Morehouse man. And your daughter... Her name is Kelly. ...is no Spellman sister. Well, let me tell you something right now, okay? Collier? No, Mary Elizabeth. I may not know anything about Spellman or Morehouse, but I do know that Kelly is going to go wherever the hell she wants for whatever reason she wants, and you and your boy have nothing to say about it. Boy, did he just say boy? Tell me he did not say boy in my house. Reggie, honey, please, just come. Oh, for Pete's sake. He... D no, he didn't mean... Uh... <sighs> What I do? We have a girl. You have a boy. I, I didn't mean anything by it. Well, go tell him that. <sighs> well, now let's talk about sex. Her name is Norma Jean Rayfield. She and Mr. Jones had three bank accounts together. It's late, Joe, and I really do have to get back to bed. And there's over $100,000 left, and none of it has been touched since the day Mr. Jones died. Maybe this really is a great love story after all. Renee? You've been thinking about us. Us? Mm-hmm. Well, of course you have, Renee. Our friendship as lawyers is, uh, uh... Not as lawyers. Oh, you know, Renee, I don't think this is a good idea. Oh, my. Joe. I'll be gentle. Just promise you'll respect me in the morning. You have one new message. Renee, it's Joe. Her name is Norma Jean Rayfield, and there's over $100,000 left, and none of it has been touched since the day Mr. Jones died. <laughs> Just try to remember what you were doing when you were 17. Oh, I have already. And that's why I know I have nothing to worry about. Besides, I know my daughter. <laughs> well, of course you do. But I know teenage boys. Oh, I'm sure you do. <sighs> oh! One down! And 
don't want him to go! <laughs> now, the only place you are going is to bed. Thank you so much for everything. Oh, hey. thanks for coming. There's nothing to worry about. Because <laughs> me and Reggie got it all figured out. I'm so glad. <laughs> Rose, I don't feel too good right now. Yeah, I explained to Kyle, uh, Kevin's just a vase. A vase? Reggie, that is enough. Oh, just... oh, damn it, you know what I'm talking about. So let me just sit down and explain. Kelly isn't a phase for anybody. She sure as hell is. The girls you marry, and the girls you practice on. White girls we used to practice on till we get it right, and then we find a beautiful black woman to settle down with. And Matt, I don't want to hear another hateful word come from your mouth. I'm sorry. So am I. Well, you went to Spelman, Renee. What do you think it'd be like for her there? She would definitely be a minority in a big, big way. And I don't think having a Johnny as a boyfriend would help her either. So where's Colin now? Oh, he's sleeping it off. Sounds good to me. I was up half the night. I had a dream about Joe. Yeah, what kind of dream? I almost kissed him. Yeah, was he naked? No, but I took his shirt off. But not his tie. What do you think that means? I think it means you like him. That's Collier. I thought you said he was sleeping it off. He was. In the car. Right there in the back seat. Crumpled up next to the chunks of Mrs. Williams' hors d'oeuvres. Head of the dog always worked for me. You left me in the car, Mary Elizabeth. Well, Collier, I didn't have much choice with your face stuck to the seat and all. Drink this and swallow these. So, what do you remember? Well, I remember leaving our house and waking up a few minutes ago. What were you thinking? What was I supposed to do? It was either drink with the guy or clock him one. Anything but get puking drunk with the father of your daughter's big-time love interest. Well, what did I miss when I was out? Well, according to Reggie... Now, Johnny is just going through a phase where he practices on a white girl. That would be Kelly. And then when he's done, he just tosses her away like a dirty white T-shirt before he moves on to a nice, fresh, black one. That son of a bitch. Well, he was drunk when he said it. I'm not talking about Reggie. I'm talking about a Johnny. I'll kill him. I thought I was going to die in the... Did you say hi? And he said hi back. And after that, and after that, I kept walking. That's not what was supposed to happen. You were supposed to sit down next to him and talk. But I didn't know what to talk to him about. So what do I do now? I don't know. Me neither. I know. If we want to know what a white boy likes to do and talk about, let's ask one. How's that? Great, but not throwing for now. Okay. Renee, boys like girls who can play and talk about baseball like Mary Elizabeth. Okay. Now, do you know what an RBI is or how to swing a bat? No. Okay. An RBI is runs batted in. Get those by hitting the ball. See, first, see here, you take this back, and when she pitches it, we'll swing together, okay? Okay. Just for the record, Collier, I play baseball because I like it. Not because you want me to. Okay, Mary Elizabeth, just pitch the ball. Are you ready? Okay, here it comes. Nay! You get on in that house. But, Grandma, we're just playing. Don't you sass me, child. When your daddy get home tomorrow, he gonna get an earful about that little white boy being sweet on you. Go but on there. Grandma. Renee Jackson? Yes? Mr. Lozano sent me as your driver. He said, and I quote, I hope this thank you makes tonight's fundraiser more fun than work.
Do you mind talking about her? Normally, yes. But tonight, I'm all yours. Okay. So, where did you meet her? She was a friend of my sister. You have a sister? And two brothers. Miguel, Pedro, and Sofia Lorel Lozano. Daddy was a big fan. How long were you married? Only a few months. I should have known it wouldn't last. Why? Because love at first sight rarely does. I think it takes a good year before you get to know somebody. Don't you agree? Probably. Can I say you look pretty tonight? Yes. Thank you. Joe, where did you learn how to dance? I used to teach ballroom dancing. You know, Renee, I think of life as a dance. It moves fast, and then it moves slow, and sometimes it stops altogether, and eventually it turns itself around, and we celebrate that we're alive and can dance once again. Donna, it's good to see you. I'd like you to meet Joe. Joe Lozano? You know each other? In Atlanta, wasn't it? Very good, you remember. Of course I do. Joe helped me raise some money for a children's adoption campaign. Well, it's uh, very nice seeing you again. You too. Uh, yeah, can I get you two ladies some champagne? Absolutely. Mm. I want the dish. Are the two of you... No, we're just business associates. Too bad. Joe was quite... The gentleman. Donna, did you and Joe? Only in my dreams. I gotta mingle. Here you go, sir. Hey. Enjoy your evening. Baby, don't worry. Everything's gonna be fine, okay? I know. I know. Just, just don't worry. Kelly, get off the phone now! Excuse me. Was that a Johnny? Yes, sir. Is this what you've been doing all week? Calling him from my office after we're asleep? I just miss him. Well, you keep this up. You're going to be missing him a whole lot more. You got that? Yes, sir. Get to bed. And today I found an old picture of Norma Jean in a safe deposit box. But it's late and it can wait till tomorrow. Oh, no. Come on in. How about a cup of coffee for the road? And look, Norma Jean Rayfield and her Mr. Jones. He's handsome. And she's beautiful. She didn't uh, like the champagne? Actually, it's my favorite. Well, then let's pop this puppy and I'll make a toast before I go. I'll do the honors. You get the glasses. Remember, turn the bottle, not the cork. I know what I'm doing, Joe. Ooh. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's all over your Armani. It's, it's, a, it's a rental. It's okay. Here, let me, let me get it off before it, it stings. And you're wrong. Oh, the tie is it's fine, really. It's what if you insist? This is okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here's a blanket. All right, are you sure it's gonna be warm enough? I'll be all right. The hell you will! Dad! Get inside! Mr. Sims! I said get inside! What are you doing? 
Kelly, I've had it with you. Get inside! I can explain if you... I don't want to hear another word out of either one of you. I told you I didn't want you talking to him. Hey! You get away from me right now. You understand me? Right now. Move! I can't believe you're doing this. Kelly, sit down and shut that up. He had nowhere else to go. Shut up! Johnny, I want you out of here before I do something with this bat. We'll both regret. Now move! Dad! No, I see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, 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 shut up! Oh, 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 You, over there. Hey, would somebody just please tell me what is going on here? Well, Mary Elizabeth is just like his father said. Her boyfriend wants to use up our daughter and just throw her away. What his father said was, if a Johnny kept seeing me, he was throwing him out of the house and not paying his tuition to Morehouse. I is that true, Johnny? Yes, ma'am. And do your parents know where you are right now? No, ma'am. He, he's here because he has nowhere else to go. I got an idea where he can go. Oh, oh, you're stuck. Mrs. Sims, I don't mean any disrespect. But without me knowing anything about him, I'm sure you're a different man than your father. My father's none of your damn business. Yes, sir. But what I'm trying to say is, is that the same's true for me and my father. Okay, my father has his own opinions. He doesn't speak for me. And I've always been taught that a man's words come second place to his actions. And if you and Mrs. Sims would just give me a chance... My actions will show how much I love Kelly. Dad, he wasn't even going to come inside. He was going to stay out on the patio. You, upstairs, now. Oh, Johnny, you can stay on the couch tonight, OK? Thank you. After midnight. I know. And I know why Johnny's at my house. And why is that? He says your husband threw him out of the house and threatened not to send him to college if he keeps seeing Kelly. Is that true? It's true. That's what he said. And what do you say? I say that no one, including my husband, is going to get in the way of my son going to more house. But this isn't just about our husbands, is it? Maybe not. I'm also not going to allow a Johnny to be treated the way he was when he first dated Kelly. He won't be. Carl, you just had an overdose of stupidity the other night, really, and, and, and once he'd slept it you off... Know, it's, it's not Kaya that I'm concerned with. It's you. What did I do? Nothing. That's exactly my point. Nothing. I've seen enough of you supposedly caring women hide behind your husband's unpopular opinions to recognize it when I see it. Hey, I'm not hiding behind anything. Oh, no? Well, then you tell me. You tell me what did you do when Kaya would not let Kelly get into a Johnny's car because he's black. Now, if I recall, you told my son not to take it personally. Well, how the hell else is a 17-year-old child supposed to take it when someone tells him he can't go out with who he wants to because of the color of his skin. Now you explain to me how you let your daughter walk back into your house. And I'll explain to you how it felt to see my son come home with tears in his eyes after it happened. I will not let that happen again. Really? Then where were you an hour ago when your son was trying to make excuses for why your husband said what he did and explaining with tears in his eyes that he was a different man than his father? Something that I don't think any son wants to say about his dad. And if you feel so differently from your husband, then why didn't you try and stop a Johnny from going out the door? Because he didn't say anything about how you try to stop his father, try to stop him from leaving. What's the truth there, Gail? The truth is, is that Kelly is not my first choice for a Johnny. Because she's white? Yes, because she's white. But you know what? I wouldn't expect you to understand that. You know, quite frankly, I don't care if you do. Because no one, including Kelly, is going to distract a Johnny from being successful. Then we agree on something. You know, Johnny's not my first choice for Kelly either, and not because he's black. Oh, you're right. I don't care if you believe me. I don't want a Johnny or anyone else to distract Kelly from her future. But I'll tell you something. If we don't all watch out, we are going to be setting the stage for a very upsetting production of Romeo and Juliet, and somebody's going to get hurt. You're hurting me, Grandma. It ain't nothing compared to how much messing with a little white boy going to hurt you. But, Grandma, you don't understand. I understand more than you think I do. Now, sit down. Now, 
I'm sorry if I, if I hurt your name. But I know by things that you don't, child. Like how white boys only take to colored girls for one reason. And it ain't by being your friend. And if you let them get too close, they gonna have their way with you. Cause to them and their friends, you always gonna be nothing more than another little nigger gal to them. You understand? Mama, did something bad happen to you? Child, when you were a colored woman and you were as old as I is, plenty bad done happen to you. But that don't mean the same has got to happen to you. But it won't, because they're not all like that. You got something to say? Y yes, ma'am. What you're saying is wrong. I think that Renee should like any boy she wants. And any boy she likes should like her back. Right? Uh, right. You got something more to say about this? Yes, ma'am. Don't be mad at me. <gasps> Renee Jackson, you get on inside before I strip me a switch. And your mamas need to do some better home training on you, too. Now get Grandma. I got gingerbread cookies in the oven. Come on in here and help me with the next batch. Yes, ma'am. You remember how I showed you? You start by rolling out the dough. Mm -mm, you sprinkle some flour on it, gonna clump up on you and make a hell of a mess. Why that face so long? I just wish I could like who I want to like, Grandma. Press down on this now, hard and even. I know times is changing, child, but they ain't changing fast enough for you to be kissing on no little white boy. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Do you remember the first time I called you Cookie, Grandma? No, I don't. <laughs> child, I can hardly remember some of my favorite cookie recipes no more. I ever tell you why I like baking my cookies? No, ma'am. Because every time I do, I bake me up something different. Same old ingredients. A little more sugar one day, a little less the next. But when my cookies is done, even though they may look the same on the outside, there's something special about them on the inside. Something different. You understand? Not really. What I mean to say, child, is that the same may be true about your little friend, Mary Elizabeth, and, and that little white boy. Now I understand. So how's this? Yeah, these look like three mighty special little cookie men to me. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha, good morning. Is, is Joe in yet? Yes. Why are we whispering? Brene, in my office? Joe, we, uh, we have to talk. I know, Renee, but later. But now my final thank you can't wait much longer. Renee Jackson, meet Norma Jean Rayfield. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, my dear. Although we have met once before. We have? Oh, yes. Many years ago. When Richard and I, Mr. Jones, came to see your father. Of course, I was just his secretary then. It was almost 20 years before they became lovers. Isn't that romantic? <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute, isn't he? 
Andy. Well, if there isn't anything else. No, you've signed everything and you have the check. That's it. May I keep this letter? Of course. Thank you. There is one more thing. Yes? If you and Mr. Jones were so in love, why didn't you ever marry? That's easy, my dear. His marriages didn't last. Bye-bye. Joe. I know, Renee, last night was a mistake. I should have resisted our friendship. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't? No, but it was the last time. And I just wanted to say thank you for being such a perfect gentleman all week. Of course, Renee. Ah, I finished that. Well, if you want me to... Okay, I gotta go. Thank you. Renee. Yes? I just want you to know. I still think you are one fine piece of ass. What? That kiss last night. Mm. What kiss? Joe, what are you doing? Well, nothing. I just figured it would be easier for us to work together if you continue to think of me as Joe Lozano the pig rather than Joe Lozano the gentleman. Thanks. No problem. That's what friends are for. You didn't see or hear any of this, understand? Mm-hmm. What do you see this time? Either you're getting better at hiding the truth, or I'm losing my touch. I kissed him. That's it. We stayed up all night talking, then he fell asleep on the couch alone. Can I blink now? Mm. The funny thing is, this whole thing got me thinking, hey, why not Joe? Until I remember that Joe's idea of a truly great romance is a man who has a mistress for 40 years and who cheats on all five of his wives. Well, gee, if you're gonna be this picky, you're never gonna find a guy. And that's okay, because after almost falling in love with a convict and then going out with Joe, I know that's not the answer. The answer to what? That's just it, I don't know. But there's something missing. And this year, I'm gonna find it. Well, when you do, do you <laughs> promise that I'll be the first one to know? Promise. <laughs> More cheese.